Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be describing the differences between cochlear deafness and retrocochlear deafness. Now, when we see the pure tone audiogram of a patient with cochlear or retrocochlear deafness, it will only show the sensory neural hearing loss. So just by looking at the audiogram, we may not be able to differentiate these two different types of deafnesses. So for that, we need some special tests of hearing. And in this video, I'll be descri describing those tests. So first is the recruitment phenomena. Now recruitment, it is the phenomena of abnormal growth of loudness. It means a loud sound which is tolerable in a normal ear may grow to abnormal levels of loudness in the recruiting ear and it becomes intolerable. So this recruitment, it is a feature of cochlear deafness while it is absent in retrocochlear deafness. And the clinical importance of uh, recruitment is that such uh, patients uh, are poor candidates for hearing aids. So recruitment is present in cochlear deafness. Then another test is short increment sensitivity index or called SISI. Now it is the ability of a person to appreciate or distinguish uh, distinguish smaller changes in the intensity of pure tone okay so this score it is very high in uh, cochlear pathology almost 70 percent it means that the patients with cochlear pathology they are able to uh, appreciate even a very small change of say one decibel in the intensity of the sound which is uh, presented to them so this is called short increment sensitivity index it is high around 70 percent in cochlear deafness while it is low around 20% in retrocochlear deafness. Then another test is tone decay. Now this tone decay, it is a measure of nerve fatigue. Now normally a person can hear a tone uh, continuously for 60 seconds. But if the patient is having any retrocochlear pathology or nerve fatigue, then he stops hearing earlier. So a, a decay of more than 25 it indicates that the patient is having retrocochlear deafness and because of nerve fatigue, he is not able to uh, hear. While uh, a decay of 0 to 25, it is generally seen with cochlear deafness. Then Beccasi audiometry can also differentiate cochlear and retrocochlear. Now Beccasi audiometry, it is a type of self-recording audiometry. Now I'll not go into very detail how it is done, but just to remember here, that in cochlear pathology, we get type 2 curve in uh, uh, Beccasi audiometry, while for retrocochlear, we get type 3 curve. Then speech discrimination. A speech discrimination is the ability of a person to understand speech. Now, overall in sensory neural hearing loss, the speech discrimination score is poor. So in cochlear deafness, we can say that the speech discrimination is 50 to 70 percent. That is, a person is able to understand only 50 to 70 percent of the words which are presented to him. But in retrocochlear, it is even poorer. So it is more poor, very poor in retrocochlear pathology and poor in cochlear pathology, speech discrimination. Then BERA. So BERA is an objective method of uh, uh, assessing the integrity of the auditory system. It is brainstem evoked response audiometry. And here we get waves, different waves, waves one to seven, depending on the area from which they are generated, the area of the auditory cortex from which they are generated. So the fifth wave, uh, there in, in cochlear deafness, there is normal interval between first and the fifth wave. But in retrocochlear pathology, the fifth wave is either delayed or absent. So by BERA we can also distinguish between these two different types of deafnesses. Then stapedial reflex. Now stapedial reflex it is present at lower intensities in cochlear deafness. The reason is that the patient is recruiting. It means he is, he is more sensitive to even, even smaller sound, uh, intensity sounds. So this reflex is present even at lower in, in intensities. While in retrocochlear pathology, the stapedial reflex decay is present. Uh, it means that uh, over a period of time, the reflex amplitude comes to 
because of the auditory fatigue or the nerve fatigue. So this is stapedial reflex. Then rollover phenomena. Now here uh, a graph is plotted between the amplitude and the score percentage. It means when we increase the intensity of uh, the sound, the patient's ability to understand the speech or the speech discrimination score improves. So uh, in rollover phenomena what happens? When we increase the intensity, the score percentage increases but rather than achieving a plateau as in cochlear pathology, it will on the contrary the score percentage will decrease with increase in the amplitude. So this is called the rollover phenomena and rollover phenomena it is a typical feature of retrocochlear deafness. Autoacoustic emissions. Now we know that autoacoustic emissions are uh, uh, produced by the outer hair cells of the cochlea. So if there is any pathology in the cochlea, the autoacoustic emissions will be absent while they are present in retrocochlear pathologies. Uh, and previously this rollover phenomena, this we can, this graphs we can get by speech audiometry. And the classical example of cochlear pathology is Meniere's disease and a classical example of retrocochlear pathology is acoustic neuroma. So these are the different uh, special tests for hearing by which we can differentiate a cochlear pathology from a retrocochlear pathology. Thank you.